Good morning. Today we are going to be reviewing for our chapter five math test. So number one asks us to list all the factors of this number and the number is 14. So I'm thinking about my multiplication chart and I know that one times 14 is 14. And I know that two times seven is 14. So my factors are one, two, seven, and 14. Number two says to select the numbers that have a factor of five and mark all that apply. Well, if it's got a factor of five, then we know it's gonna end in five or a zero. So 15 ends in five, three does not. 45 ends in five, five ends in five, 50 ends in zero, 31 does not. So those are all the numbers that have a factor of five. Next it says, Jackson was making a poster for his room. He arranged 50 trading cards in the shape of a rectangle on the poster. For 3A, 23C, choose yes or no to tell whether a possible arrangement of cards is shown. Well, I just think about my multiplication facts and my factors. So five rows of 10 cards, five times five is 50. And remember, we're looking to make it even for 50, so yes. Seven rows of eight cards, well, seven times eight is not 50, so that's going to be no. 25 rows of two cards, well, two times 25 is 50, so yes. 50 rows of one card, well, 50 times one is 50, so yes. 45 rows of five cards, that does not make 50, so the answer is going to be no. The next question asks us to list all the factor pairs in the table. We're looking for factors of 8. So I always start with 1 because it's easier. 1 times 48 equals 48. Then I look, I know that it's divisible by 2 because it's even. So 2, and I know 2 times 24 is 48. And then I try 3, and 3 does go into it equally because 3 times 16 is 48. And I look at 4. 4 times 12 is 48, and 5 does not go into 48, but 6 does, and 6 times 8 is 48. 7 does not, 8 does not, and 9 does not. So my factors are this 1 and 48, 1, 48, the 2 and the 24, 2, 24, the 3 and the 16, the 4 and the 12, the six and the eight. Number five is to classify the numbers. Some numbers may belong in more than one box. So 54, we know it's not divisible five by five because it, so it can't go in there because it doesn't end in five and or zero. But it is divisible by six and nine. And it's also divisible by two and six. Now 72, actually I'm just gonna do this five and nine one first. We know these are not going to be divisible by five, so they cannot go in there. But 90 is divisible by both five and nine. So that's the only one that's gonna be in there. 90 can also go into six and nine because it's divisible by both. And 90 can, nope, that's it. That's all 90 can do. 72 can go into, it's divisible by six and nine. It is also divisible by two and six. And then 84, 84 is not divisible by six and nine, but it is divisible by two and six. And then finally, 96 is not divisible by nine and six, but it is divisible by two and six. All right. And by divisible, I mean that five can go into 90 with no leftovers. Nine can go into 90 with no leftovers, right? All right, finally, James works in a flower shop. He will put 36 tulips in a vase for a wedding. He must use the same number of tulips in each vase. The number of tulips in each vase must be greater than one and less than 10. How many tulips can be in each vase? So he's got 36 and the number of tulips has to be greater than one, but less than 10. So two goes into 36 evenly, as does three, four, six, and nine. And all of those numbers are greater than one and less than 10. And they go in equally, right? All right. 
Brady has a card collection with 64 baseball cards, 32 football cards, and 24 baseball cards. He wants to arrange the cards in equal piles with only one type of card in each pile. How many cards can he put into each pile? Mark how that apply. So on this one, what you're going to want to do is take your 64, 32, 24, and you're going to want to write all of the factors and then circle the ones they have in common. So 1 in times 64, 2 times... 32, 8 times 8, and 32 is 1 times 32, 2 times 16, 4 times 8, all of those equal 32. And then for 24, you've got 1 times 24, 2 times 12, six, uh, 3 times 3 times 8, Okay, I forgot that 4 times 16 is also um, 64. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the ones that are in common. So 1, 2's, um, oops, I didn't do the 4 over here. 4 times 6. Uh, so they all have 4 in common. Let's see, they all have 8 in common. And it looks like that's it. So they have 1 two, four, and eight in common. The next one says the garden club is designing a garden with 24 cosmos, 32 pansies, and 36 marigolds. Each row will only have one type of plant in each row. Ben says that he can put six plants in each row. He lists the common factors of 24, 32, and 36 below to support his reasoning. Is he correct? Explain your answer. If his reasoning is incorrect, explain how he should have found the answer. So no, he is not correct. He lists the factors for 32 and 36, but they're not right. 6 and 9 are not factors of 32. So 6 and 9 are not factors of 32, but 8 is. And 8 is not a factor of 36, but 9 is. So, the factors that they have in common are 1s, 2s, 4s, and that's it. So, the, he could only put them in rows of 1, in rows of 2, or in rows of 4. So, um, 6 is not an option. The number of pieces in art museum is shown on the table below. So, oil paintings, there's 30, photographs, there's 24, sketches, 21. The museum is hosting a show for July that features the oil paintings by different artists. All the artists show the same number of paintings in each, and will show each will show more than one painting. How many artists could be featured in the show? Two, three, five, six, ten, or fifteen artists. The museum wants to display all the pieces in a row. Each row has the same number of pieces and the same types of pieces. How many pieces could each row have? So this is where you're going to find all the factors and find the ones that they have in common. So again, we're going to list them out. So 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and... So once you list them all out, you find what they have in common. So it's 1 and 3. So the answer is 1 or 3. Charles was skipped counting in the math club meeting. He started to count by eight. He said eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, and 48. What number did he say next? You look at the pattern, it looks like he skipped counting by eight because eight plus eight is 16, 16 plus eight is 24, and so on. So 48, if I add eight to it, I will get 56. Jill wrote the number 40. If her rule is to add seven, what is the fourth number in Jill's pattern? How can you check your answer? Well, I'm going to start with the 40, and I want to know the fourth number. So one, two, three, four. So this is going to be my answer. It says to add seven. So 40 plus seven is 47. 47 plus seven is 54. And 54 plus seven is 61. So my answer is 61. Next, the for numbers 12, a through 12e, select true or false for each statement. The number 36 is a multiple of 9. That is true. The number 3 is a multiple of 9. That is false. The number 54 is a multiple of 9. That is true. The number 3 is a factor of 9. That is true. The number 27 is a factor of 9. And that is false. What multiple of 7 is also a factor of 7? That would be 7. 
Manny makes dinner using one box of pasta, one box, one jar of sauce. If pasta is sold in packages of six boxes and sauce is sold in packages of three jars, what is the least number of dinners Manny can make without having supplies left over? So again, you're going to list out your factors. And so on this, I'm going to list out my multiples. I'm going to find the first one they have in common. Six is not, and it looks like six is going to be it. So you can make six dinners without having any left over. Serena has several packages of raisins. Each package contains three boxes of raisins, which could be the number of box of raisins that Serena has. Marks all that apply. Again, I'm looking at my multiples. So three times three is nine. So nine could be an option. 18 could be an option. And 27 could be an option. 23 and 32 are not multiples of three. So those would not work. Next, it says choose the words that make sense in the, in the number sentence. The number seven is prime because it has exactly two factors, one and seven, right? When he wrote the following riddle, I'm a number between 60 and 100. My one digit is two less than my tens digit. I am a prime number. What number does riddle, when, when these riddle describe, explain? Well, the digit in the tens place must be a six, seven, eight, or nine. So the number must be 64, 75, 86, or 97. But since 64 and 86 are even um, and divisible by 2, they can't be it. So it can't be 64 or 86. And since five is, as 75 is divisible by 5, it can't be it. So the answer has to be 97. Winnie's friend Marco guessed that her riddle was about the number 79. Why can't 79 be the answer to Winnie's riddle? Explain. So although 79 is a prime number between 60 and 100, the ones place is two more than the tens place because 9 is two more than 7. And the riddle says that the ones place needs to be at least one less than the tens place. All right, number 18. Classify the numbers as prime or composite. Well, 37 can go only go into 1 and 37, so it's prime. And 65, we know 5 can go into it, so it's going to be composite. 82, we know 2 can go into it, so it's composite. And 71, only 1 and 71 can go into it, so it's prime. Eric, Erica knits 18 squares on Monday. She knits 7 more squares each day from Tuesday through Thursday. How many squares does she knit by Friday? So on Monday, she has 18 squares. And if I add 7 more, I get 25. Then I add 7 more, and I get 32. Then I add 7 more and I get 39, so the answer is 39 squares. Use the rule to write the first five terms of the pattern. Add 10 and subtract five, and the first term is 11. So I'm starting with 11, and I need to find five terms. So first I add 10, which is 21, then I subtract five, so I get 16, then I add 10, so I get 20, whoops, 26, then I subtract five, and I get 21. Elena has 10 tiles to arrange in a rectangular design. She drew a model of a rectangle that she could make with 10 tiles. So she did 1 times 10 and 2 times 5. How did Elena's drawing show that the number of 10 is a composite number? Since there are two possible rectangles, we know that it has more factors than 1 in itself. Suppose Elena used 15 tiles to make the rectangular design. How many different rectangles could she make with 15 tiles? Write a list and draw a picture to show the number of dimensions of the rectangles she could make. Well, we know that 1 times 15 is 15, and 3 times 5 is 15. So she could make two rectangles without having any um, leftover. Elena's friend Luke said that he could make more rectangles with 24 tiles than with Elena's 10 tiles. Do you agree with Luke? And explain. So the answer is yes, because with 24 tiles, you can make a rectangle with 1 times 24. You can make a 2 times 12, a 3 times 8, and a 4 times 6. But with 10 tiles, you can only make a 1 times 10 or a 2 times 5. All right, good luck with your test, and I know you're going to do wonderful.